done it all throughout your illustrious career. What was it about Air Force One Down and this character in particular that resonated with you? There were a few elements to this that that just felt meant to be. Um, first of all, James Bamford, the director, I worked with very closely on Arrow and have the utmost respect and admiration for him. Um, I also studied under him in the directing sphere a little bit. So hmm. getting to see him now in this realm doing films and kind of letting his career skyrocket as well is, you know, I'm, I'm just like a proud daughter sitting there. But so an opportunity to go work with him again. Also with a script that's so action heavy, I really knew that having a director who is so well-versed in action and, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes above and beyond to create action that is moving and also intense, but but brutal at the same time, um, that's Bam's specialty. So I, I knew I was in good hands, but uh, you know, I, I haven't gotten to play a character who is like this in a very long time. Um, she's very no nonsense. She uh, mm -hmm. knows and she does it and um I really wanted an opportunity to have my kind of you know a, atomic blonde moment as it were and uh do a film that I I mean in the film I'm doing probably all but about six shots all of the action is me so it, I was really really lucky to have the opportunity to uh retrain and show my skill in that realm as well the stunts are absolutely incredible in this film. And, you know, throughout your career, you've jumped so seamlessly between film and television and TV. You learn more about your character as the series goes on. But in film, you know where your character's story starts and ends. As an actress, how different is that filming experience and that character development process for you? You know, it's really interesting. I feel I, I, I'm excited for both um, mediums, as it were. In TV, my one of my favorite things is living with a character for so long and growing with her and, and discovering different things about her as I get more scripts as the years go on. Um, but in a film, it's almost more interesting and, and at times more creative because I have to make up most of it. And it really doesn't mm. matter what I make up in my head as long as it works for me, um, as long as it still serves the story, you know, and and I could be, you know, there could be a million different backstories in, in different people's heads. But it's it's exciting to to get to fill in the blanks from the A to Z uh, on my own. Um, but this this film in particular was really wonderful because, yes, it's an action film. But it was one where the emotional beats still felt very grounded and still yeah. felt very, and uh, you know it it has both kind of aspects and that juxtaposition is really well done. You know when Agent Miles first boards Air Force One, you can tell how much it means to her. When you look at your own career, what's what's been that head in the clouds moment for you and why? Oh, I think forever it will be the first time I went to New York Comic Con. Um, it was for Shadowhunters, and we had just wrapped our season one the night before. Alberto and I wrapped and literally went straight to the airport and met the rest of the cast there. And then the next morning, we were at New York Comic Con, and we hadn't seen any of the show. No one had. It had been kept so secret. And we watched, um, we, well, we walked into the, the hall where our panel was going to be. And it was standing room only at that point. The show hadn't even come out yet and it was already full to the brim and we could hear the excitement of everyone waiting to watch it. And then they played the first seven minutes of our pilot episode for the whole audience and getting to you know, watch it on this giant screen from behind. We, we saw it in mirror image, but it still worked out. Uh, and getting to hear the audience's reactions live yeah. for the first time. There is, I've never experienced anything so electric. And, you know, your character is such a trailblazer in her field, similar to yourself. What did you learn about your own craft playing her? Um, I learned uh, how far my physical limitations actually were. Um, I obviously haven't done uh, such a physical role in about seven years. And it, it took me by surprise because I, you know, obviously jumped back into training. But I only had about three and a half weeks of training to prep for this mm. Was already in production and then when I got to Bulgaria I had five days to train 10 hours a day with the stunt team and those that stunt team was one of the most fantastic teams I've ever worked with uh they are absolutely fantastic artists fantastic people they accumulated an amazing team of folks where um you know not only did I did they take a chance on me and allow me to show them that I could actually live up to, you know, working with their stuntmen. But I also felt safe the entire time. And that's mm. that's a huge thing when it comes to having, you know, an actor do a bunch of stunts throughout the uh, throughout the filming process. How does that physicality allow you to further tap into Allison's core? Was there a particular sequence that you were really excited to, to film? Uh, there are a few. I mean, for me, you know, when I'm playing a character like 
Clary or Mia or Allison, where the physicality and the things that they do physically um, are so a part of who they are as a person. Mm -hmm. It's really important to me to be able to participate in as many of those stunts as possible. Now, they obviously wouldn't let me, you know, get hit by a car or go through a wall or jump out of an airplane or things like this. But when it comes to the actual combat, um, I was able to do the majority of it. And it it was so gratifying for me because it does play into so much of who she is and what her journey is through this process. Um, there were there were two fights that I I really was was um, excited and uh, not trepidatious, but I I was I worked very hard to make sure that they would go well. One of which there's about a seven minute sequence of one one and a half minute oneers where she's fighting her way through this tower of a of a cement building, and uh, just getting to work with the whole team and getting to you know kill everyone about three times in the fight. <laughs> It was great fun but I think my favorite fight and probably my favorite day on set and if you ask Bam I bet you it's his favorite day on set as well um is the scene where Allison fights the assassin on the plane in the president's office and I got to work with uh one of the most amazing stunt performers I've ever worked with his name is Max Krause he's absolutely incredible he's worked on just about everything but not only was he a top-notch performer but he was so kind and we just had fun and it's, you know, it's two assassins playing chess at that point. And we both knew the fight so well. We'd spent so much time rehearsing together that we just got into a flow. And in a similar way, when you're acting with someone that you really connect with on, a, on an emotional scene, you just lock into that zone. I had the same thing with Max to, for that fight. And that was so important. Mm. That moment really means something. It's action-packed throughout this film. You know, Agent Miles and President Edwards' relationship is about not judging a book by its cover. And that dynamic has such a great transformation throughout the film. What was it like getting to work with Ian to bring that journey to life? I love Ian so much. I've known Ian for probably nearly 10 years now, and we've never worked together. So finally, you know, getting the chance to, to play on screen, it's such an amazing feeling when you get on set with someone and you go, oh, we actually work in a very similar way. And we just instantly clicked. And I think we had a very similar idea to what we wanted to accomplish with these characters and with this story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Bam is so great in allowing us to play. And we have the time to to try different things and, and really experiment with these characters and find the right journey for them. But um, these characters were so clearly defined and, and we still had a chance to kind of make them our own through the process. I also love the relationship between Allison and her uncle, who is very much a mentor figure to her. Who are the people in your own life who've shaped the storyteller that you are today? Did you channel any of them into that dynamic? Uh, I, well, you know, BAM has been a huge... Mm. Uh, with my career for several years now, you know, getting to after Shadowhunters, I had just jumped into Arrow almost immediately and having someone who, you know, very similarly to the stunt coordinators on Shadowhunters who saw what I could do. But not only that, he gave me a chance to shadow him as a director and to kind of learn from him in other ways as well. And it really means a lot, you know, because at the time I was 21 years old or 20 23 years old and and when you're a young woman who's been an actor your whole career people don't always take you seriously when you say you want to do something else and and step up to a different plate um and I've always been so grateful that he uh he heard me out and gave me a shot hmm. have you found that the work that you've now done behind the scenes you know directing and producing have now impacted the way that you approach your work on screen interpret characters and scripts like this you know it's so interesting because I I was told a long time ago, um, Michael Goy, who's an incredible cinematographer and director, worked on Shadowhunters ages ago. And I had a very similar relationship to him as I do with Bam. I was asking him a bunch of questions and he really was mentoring me in that regard. And he stopped me one day and said, do you realize you're asking all the questions a director would ask, not the questions an actor would ask? And I had never seen it from that perspective before, but I just, mm. I always approach a story from not the approach of serving myself or my character in the story, but serving the story as a whole through what I can provide. And um, I guess that's kind of the vision of a director is, is you know, creating a perspective and, and serving the story through your creative um, view. And, you know, it's something that it affects things both ways, but now mm -hmm. that I'm aware of my um, instincts on directorially and producerially, I see them influencing my work in both directions a bit more. Earlier, you know, James has such an illustrious background in stunts. How does that expertise allow you to build trust between actor and director and also allow you to have that freedom to play and improvise? It's so great because not only for me as an actor, he's worked with actors in, in the realm of stunts. He's been on both sides of the camera yeah. in these situations. 
happens for decades. And when you have someone who not only has been behind the camera and seen what works and what doesn't, but he's also been the stuntman who has to do a hard fall 37 times because you don't get the shot. So he is um, aware and, and sensitive to everyone's safety and everyone's energy levels and what is gonna serve the story best. And the, the best thing that I will say about him is he has a very, very high standard for if, you know, if we don't get the shot, we will go again. But as soon mm. as we get the shot, we'll move on because he wants to conserve everyone's kind of energy levels and and capacity for safety for the next shot and the next shot and the next shot. And he will always finish his days. He will always get everything done and you know it will be done right. And when you're working on a film that can kind of be a very fast pace and kind of touch and go when you're throwing things in and together and haven't had a ton of time to train, um, it means a lot when you know somebody is overprepared for any situation. And there's so many lessons that you can take away from this film with it being out now digitally. What do you hope audiences take away? And was there a lesson that you learned? Uh, I think I think my biggest takeaway from the film was when you think you are completely tapped of every resource, you still have a little bit in the tank. There's mm -hmm. always a little bit of a reserve there that you can draw on uh, from your inner strength, whether it be physical or emotional. Um, and I, I hope that's what people take from the story too. You know, if the odds are stacked against you, there's always a way out. If you're if you're backed up against a wall, punch through the wall behind you, um, and find another way out and get creative. You know, don't let anyone judge you by how they perceive you to to limit what they can expect of you. Um, mm -hmm. Only you can limit your own your own abilities. Yeah, I think there's a lot in the film about how the great rise to to that pressure. I got one final question for you. Outside of Air Force One Down, what's next for you? And you've done so much already in your career. What's left in that bucket list? Ooh, I have so many irons in the fire right now. Uh, everything now that, you know, the strike is over and we're kind of coming out of that pandemic, workdemic, all of everything is kind of rolling again. I'm uh, I'm excited to see what is going to go first. You know, I'm, I'm sort of playing that game of spinning plates right now and seeing if, you know, the film I'm going to direct is going to go first or something else that I'm producing and developing or something that I'm meant to act in that's been on hold for eight months. You know, it's it's just about seeing what what gets the trigger pulled first. Um, but there's definitely some some creative uh, ventures that I am truly excited about. And and I think will be a new chapter in a lot of ways. Mm, great teaser. I don't know how you do all that you do. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day again to chat with us. Congratulations on this film. It was so fun to watch. And I hope we get an opportunity to chat again in the future. I would love that. Thank you, yeah. Kevin.